The Kraft Foods Company, makers of Kraft Quality Foods, presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous cheese food, Velveeta. Everybody goes for Velveeta's rich yet mild cheddar cheese flavor in snacks, in sandwiches, and in hot dishes. And Velveeta, you know, helps supply important food values from milk and is as digestible as milk itself. That's why smart homemakers keep Velveeta on hand regularly to spread or slice and to melt for grand economical hot dishes. Tomorrow, get Velveeta. The cheese food of craft quality. Well, it's a crisp, cold night in Summerfield. Here and there, a lighted Christmas tree glows warmly in a window. Holly wreaths have begun to appear. The ground is white with new snow, and it's still falling. Big, fat flakes that cling to the porches and the trees and to the brim of the great Gildersleeve's hat as he hurries down his front steps. Makes a cautious turn as he reaches the sidewalk. And then strides gaily up the street toward Catherine Milford's house. Deck the halls with boughs of holly, fa la 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 Tis the season to be jolly, fa la 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 it, What? Leroy, I wouldn't run so fast. These sidewalks are slippery. Sure, I can slide even. Look here. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> this is one time those big feet come in handy. <laughs> Better than skis, Leroy. Where are you going, Unc? Well, I thought I'd be dropping in at Miss Milford's for a while this evening. Can I walk with you? I'm going to Piggy's house. They're putting up their tree tonight. We're going to decorate it. Well, good. Uh, don't stand on the furniture. You gonna help Miss Milford decorate her tree? Well, you can never tell, Leroy. We may string a few cranberries, drape the icicles around. What if Dr. Olson is there? Leroy, don't you worry about Dr. Olson. I'm not. But you said he was a pain in the neck. You said he was always hanging around her house when you wanted to be there. Well, you weren't supposed to have heard that, but it used to be that way. How is it now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Suffice it to say, my boy, that your old uncle has a situation very well under control. But the fact is... I haven't seen Dr. Clarence Q. Olson in over three weeks. Gee, then you're winning, aren't you, Hunk? You bet I'm winning. Golly, you got to be smart to be the doctor, too. You said it. Gee, you're my uncle. Yeah. Well, here's Piggy's house. See you later, Hunk. Yeah, see you later, Leroy. Yes, sir, there's a mighty fine boy. <laughs> Throckmorton. Uh, hello, Catherine. Come on in. My, it's snowing out, isn't it? Well, just a little. Look at you. You have a big snowflake right in the end of your nose. I do? Well, cold nose, warm heart. <laughs> <laughs> Let me take your coat. Uh, thank you. Well, beautiful tree, Catherine. And Christmas presents. All those for me? No, but you can help me finish wrapping them. Fine. A lot of presents. Well, Mother and I have a lot of relatives. It, oh, sure. Then I couldn't forget those darling children down at the hospital. Oh? There are five of them that Santa Claus may not remember. Well, good for you, Catherine. Be a shame if any little kitties were forgotten on Christmas. Mm. Here, put your finger on this ribbon while I tie the knot, huh? Hmm? <sighs> kind of cold. I'll try it. <laughs> yeah. Well, interesting paper you're using, Catherine. Mistletoe design. <laughs> Just put the package over there. Uh, well, I think I'll balance it right on top of your head. Throckmorton. And you know what that means, mistletoe. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you rushing the season a little? Well, I don't know. Only nine more shopping days left. You better put the package down there by the tree. Oh, shucks. Say, here's a fancy-looking package. I think that's Mother's gift to me. Uh, your mother couldn't wait, eh? Let me shake this. But I guess what's in it. Now, Throckmorton. Oop. Card fell off. Oh, dear. Well. Isn't that just like your mother? To the dearest girl in the world, Clarence. Clarence! 
<laughs> Throckmorton, give me the package. That one isn't from Mother. Oh, I guess not. Dr. Clarence Olson, the intern, eh? I thought he'd given up. Clarence has been on night duty at the hospital. Mm -hmm. I can hardly wait to open his present. He always thinks of the most original things. Well, I haven't brought you my present yet. I'm liable to think of something pretty original, too. Oh? Give me a hint. Hint? Well... At the hospital, Clarence keeps teasing me about what's in this package. Oh, he does, does he? Uh -huh. All he'll tell me is that it starts with a K for Catherine. Isn't that clever? Well, I guess there's a fine line between being clever and being corny. <laughs> now, Throckmorton, he's very ingenious. Mm. In fact, the uh, mistletoe paper was his idea. It was? Well, might have been his idea, but I was the first one who thought of holding it over your head. <laughs> I think. Breakfast! Uh, coming, Bertie. Wish I knew what that fellow Olson is giving Catherine for Christmas. I'll have to go on one better. Good morning, Anki. Hi, Uncle. Good morning, children. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Gruel. Marjorie, what Christmas presents can you think of that starts with the letter K? K? Well, who's the present for, Unc? A little kid we know, spelled K-I-D? <laughs> Hardly, Roy. I was thinking about something for a young lady. Oh, you mean me. <laughs> well, we'll get around to you children later. There's a present under Miss Milford's tree, and it starts with a K. I'm trying to think what it is. Forgot what you gave her, Hunk. I haven't done my shopping yet, Leroy. This was from somebody else. Oh-ho. What do you mean, oh-ho? Oh, it's Miss Milford's present from Dr. Olson, isn't it? Well, yes. Well, if it's from the doc, why do you want to know what it is, Hunk? Well, I don't want to give her the same present, Leroy. I'd like to give her something a little better. Well, if it starts with a K, maybe it's a Kodak, Unky. Kodak? No, it's a pretty big package. I know, Unc. It's a kangaroo. Okay. <laughs> I doubt that, Leroy. Dr. Olson isn't that ingenious. Canary? I don't think it's alive, Leroy. As I recall, canary doesn't start with a K. Like some hot coffee, Mr. Gillsleeve? Thank you, Bertie. It could be knickknacks. No, sir, this is coffee. What? <laughs> Bertie, we're trying to think of some gift a woman would like, starting with K. Oh? Any ideas, Bertie? I'm getting them from everybody. And some pretty bad ones. Well, if it's for a woman, maybe it's something for the kitchen. Kitchen. Well, I can't think of anything for the kitchen that starts with a K. Except Kraft cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of anything. Maybe it's kisses, Mr. Gillsleeve. Kisses? The candy type, you know. Candy kisses, wrapped in paper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness, a kitchen hillbilly. I'd thought of giving her something starting with K for Catherine. I could give her something starting with G for Gildersleeve. Nah, that's not the same idea. Let's see. K, K, carrot. He could be giving her a diamond. He wouldn't dare. <laughs> Kettle drums. <laughs> kilts. Uh, he wouldn't give her those. She'd look cute in kilts, though. <laughs> Well, good morning, Gildy. Well, the Honorable Judge Hooker. Good morning, Horace. You were walking along with a faraway look in your eye. Were you dreaming of a white Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> oh, goat, I'm trying to get an idea about a Christmas present for Miss Milford, Horace. Oh? Have you tried looking in the stores? No, thanks for the idea. Not at all. But if you're going to do any shopping, Gildy, you better get busy or there won't be anything left. Don't you worry, Judge. You'll get your necktie. Yeah, I'm afraid so. But I didn't mean that, Gildy. It just seems that everybody I know has been Christmas shopping. I bumped into Floyd, Chief Gates, your current amour, Miss Milford. Oh? And yesterday I even ran into your arch rival, Dr. Olson. Olson? Where did you run into him, Horace? Why, in Hogan Brothers. But why are you so excited, Gildy? Ah, now we're getting someplace. What department was he in? Well, as I recall, he was in the gift shopping. Oh? Do you remember who waited on Olson? What did the sales girl look like? Sales girl? 
Well, uh, dark, wavy hair, parted in the middle, black mustache. Black... <laughs> black mustache? Oh, no, no, no. I'm thinking of the floor walker. Uh, well, think a little harder, Judge. What did the sales girl look like? I've got to talk to her. Well, as I recall, she was rather tall. Oh? Or was she short? That's it, a short brunette. Good. Or was she a blonde? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Judge, come along with me and point her out. Gladly, Gildy. She was pretty, as I recall. Or was she? Yes. <laughs> Look at all those shoppers. Stay right behind me, Judge. Don't you worry about me, Gildy. If I start losing ground, I'll grab you by the coattails. Oh, pardon me, miss. Madam. Oop. Are you Excuse being... me, coming through. Yeah, here's the gift shop. Now, where's the sales girl, Horace? There she is at the end of the counter. Oh? Are you being held? Uh, not yet, miss. I'd like a little information. Yes, sir. Uh, Dr. Clarence Olson, a friend of mine, was in your department yesterday and bought something. As I recall, he was carrying a little black bag, and he placed it on your counter here. I seem to remember that. Yes, he's a tall young man with blonde, wavy hair. Oh, you mean the tall, handsome, blonde man. Well, I wouldn't go so far as to say he's handsome. That sounds like Dr. Olson to me. Please, Horace. Miss, do you remember what he bought? Well, he looked at several things. He did. We're on the right track, Judge. Now I'll find out what he got for Catherine. I showed him a diamond necklace like this. The hymen necklace? My! But he didn't buy it. Good. Then he looked at these watches. Hmm. Platinum. But he didn't buy one. <laughs> Young lady, what did he buy? Well, he just bought something for $5. Only $5? Cheapskate. I'll buy Catherine something more expensive than that. My, nothing like the true Christmas spirit. All right, Judge. Young lady, what did Dr. Olson buy? He went down to the next counter and bought a pair of suspenders. Suspenders? That's easy, Gildy. Now you can buy Catherine a nice pipe. <laughs> Is there something I can show you? Hmm, you can show me the way out. The Great Gildersleeve will be right back. Well, Christmas comes but once a year. So who cares if holiday preparations keep you mothers so busy you can't fuss with the old three squares? You can do very well without fussing. For instance, take lunch. You can serve jiffy, quick, and easy pan-fried sandwiches of Kraft's famous cheese food, Velveeta. They're delicious, with Velveeta's grand, rich, yet mild cheddar cheese flavor. And they're nourishing, too, because Velveeta is rich in important food values from milk. It helps supply protein for strong muscles, minerals that help build sound teeth and bones, vitamins needed for normal growth. Yes, Velveeta helps supply many important food values your family should have. To make these wholesome sandwiches, all you do is melt some butter or parquet margarine in a skillet. Then fry the sandwiches till the bread is golden brown on both sides and the Velveeta melting. Easy, aren't they? And so good, you'll serve wholesome pan-fried Velveeta sandwiches often, whether you're in a hurry or not. So keep your refrigerator stocked with a two-pound loaf of Velveeta. Just be sure you get genuine Velveeta when you buy. It's the cheese food of top quality, made only by Kraft. there's a fancy Christmas package under the tree at Catherine Milford's house from Gildersleeve's rival, Dr. Olson. What's in it? That's what the water commissioner would like to know. Well, whatever it is, I'll get her something better. He may have the edge on me at the hospital, but by George, I'll beat him under the Christmas tree. I'll go all out. Hello, PV. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> What can I do for you this afternoon? Well, I'm looking for a Christmas present, Peavy, for a lady. Something extra special. A gift for Miss Milford, is it? You bet. Mm -hmm. That sneaky Dr. Olson bought her something that looks pretty nice. But I'm going to go him one better. I'm going to get her something so beautiful and so clever, it'll make him look silly. My, my. <laughs> Any suggestions, Peavy? Well, uh, what does she like? Has she dropped any hints? No. Lately, all she talks about is those little kids she takes care of at the hospital. 
Must be something clever and original I could get for her, Peavy. Well, how about a year's subscription to the Reader's Digest? <laughs> year's subscription? Or how about a nice set of scales? Women like to weigh themselves, you know. Peavy, she can weigh herself at the hospital. Does she uh, like sweet meat? Sweet meats? We have some very attractive boxes of candied prunes. Uh. Quite helpful, too. No, Peavy. How about some musical bath salts? No. A ballpoint pen? No. Mr. Gildersleeve, you're rather hard to please. Oh. <laughs> Peavy, I've got to get something different, something original. Now, you've had plenty of experience at this Christmas thing. Mm, that's true. You've been buying Christmas presents for Mrs. Peavy for 20 years. Yes, I have. Well, certainly after all that time, a man should know what it takes to please a woman. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I can see you're going to be of no help at all, Peavy. I'm going back downtown. That's a good idea. Happy shopping, Mr. Gildersleeve. Happy shopping to you. <laughs> Brother, what a mob in this store. Why does everybody wait till the last minute to buy their Christmas presents? Watch it, madam. <laughs> Wonder if Catherine would like an alligator bag. No, I don't think she likes alligators. I don't either. I'll have to look around some more. Excuse me. Pardon me. Ow! That's my foot, lady. Going up, going up, please. Oh, where's everybody rushing to? Huh? The elevator. Hey, I don't want to get on this elevator. Oh, watch it. Well, I'm in whether I want to be or not. Second floor, phonographs, radios, toys. Out on two, please. Uh, thank you. Might get her a radio. No, everybody has a radio. Have to be more original than that. I'm going to beat that slick intern. Wish I had chairs around here. My feet hurt. Might just as well sit on this little red wagon a minute. Uh, well, cute toys up here. Is that you, Miss Gilsleeve? Well, hello, Bertie. What are you doing up here in toys? Oh, I got a lot of little nieces and nephews I have to buy for. Oh, yes. They don't have much, and when I show up on Christmas with my arms full of toys, they think I'm some pumpkin. Yeah, I bet they do, Bertie. Say, what if I showed up with an arm full of toys for those kiddies at the hospital? The ones Mrs. Milford is, Miss Milford is so fond of. Them children would think you were some pumpkin, too, Mr. Gilsleeve. Yeah, I guess they would. What's more, I'd be some pumpkins with Miss Milford, too. Yes, sir. You bet. There's nothing I could do that would impress her more. By George, this is a great idea we had, Bertie. Clerk! Clerk! I, I want to buy some toys. Whoop. What was that? That's the wagon you just bought. <laughs> okay, I'll buy it. And half the toy department, too. Clerk! <laughs> what an idea. Can never top this. I'll walk in on Catherine, pass out these toys to her little kitties, and tell her this is my Christmas present to her. What can she say except that I'm the greatest guy in the world? The kids will get a kick out of it, too. <laughs> in turn, turn in your suit. Hey, this must be the ward. I see some children there. Well, hello, little children. Hello. Hello. Hey, where is uh, Miss Milford? She'll be back. She went to get our orange juice. Oh, well, I'll just put these packages down here and wait. Are you Santa Claus? Me? Nah, he's not Santa Claus. He hasn't got a white beard. But he's <laughs> nice and fat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he's not Santa Claus. Santa Claus never comes around here. Uh, now, wait a minute, young fellow. I'm uh, sort of a Santa Claus. I brought all these presents to you children. For us? Honest and truly? Oh, boy! You see, Stuffy, he is Santa Claus. <laughs> oh, boy, I gotta come over and see them. Stuffy's lucky. He's in a wheelchair. Oh. Well, I'll bring the presents around to your little beds when Miss Milford comes. I want to open mine. Now, now, wait a minute, Stuffy. You shouldn't open presents until Christmas. I don't want to open mine until Christmas. I just want to dream about what's in them. Uh, that's the idea, little girl. Huh? While we're waiting for Miss Milford, will you read us a Christmas story? A uh, Christmas story? That's what she was doing. Yeah, they're in that book. Oh, well, I like stories. I used to read them to my niece and nephew. Let's see what we've got here. Why the Chimes Rang by Raymond McDonald Alden. I like that one. I don't know it. Well, I've been in the hospital longer than you have. 
Yes. Well, let's read it, huh? We don't have much time. Once upon a time, in a faraway country, there was a wonderful church. It stood on a high hill in the midst of a great city. And every Sunday, as well as on sacred days like Christmas, thousands of people climbed the hill to its great archways, looking like lines of ants, all moving in the same direction. I don't know why ants in the hospital. Stop interrupting, Stuffy. Yeah, must listen, Stuffy. <laughs> now, all the people knew that at the top of the tower was a chime of Christmas bells. They had hung there ever since the church had been built, and they were the most beautiful bells in the world. Some described them as sounding like angels far up in the sky. Others as sounding like strange winds singing through the trees. But for many years, they had never been heard. Why didn't the bells ring? Well, we're coming to that, I guess. It was said that people had been growing less careful of their gifts for the Christ child, that no offering was brought which was fine enough to deserve the music of the chimes. Every Christmas Eve, people still crowded to the altar, each one trying to bring some gift better than any other. Why did they do that? Well, for personal reasons, I guess. They were trying to make a big impression. Oh. Mm-hmm. Now, where were we? Oh, yes. Now, a number of miles from the city, in a little country village, lived a boy named Pedro and his little brother. They had heard of the service in the church on Christmas Eve and planned to go see the beautiful celebration. Nobody can guess, little brother, Pedro would say, all the fine things there are to see and hear. And I've even heard it said that the Christ child sometimes comes down to bless the service. What if we should see him? The day before Christmas, Pedro and little brother were able to slip away quietly. And although the walking was hard in the frosty air, before nightfall they had trudged so far, hand in hand, that they saw the lights of the big city just ahead of them. They were about to enter one of the great gates in the wall that surrounded it, and they saw something dark on the snow near their path. And they stepped aside to look at it. What was it? Well, let's see. There by the path was a poor woman who had fallen in the snow, too sick and tired to get in where she might have found shelter. Oh. Pedro knelt down beside her. You will have to go on alone, little brother, he said. Alone, cried little brother. But you will not see the Christmas festival. No, said Pedro and he could not keep back a bit of a choking sound in his throat. See this poor woman? Her face looks like the Madonna in the chapel window, and she'll freeze to death if nobody cares for her. But I can't bear to leave you and go on alone, said little brother. Both of us need not miss the service, said Pedro, and it had better be I than you. You can easily find your way to the church, and you must see and hear everything twice, little brother, once for you and once for me. And oh, if you get a chance, little brother, to slip up to the altar without getting in anybody's way, take this little silver piece of mine and lay it down for my offering when no one is looking. In this way, he hurried little brother off to the city and winked hard to keep back the tears as he heard the crunching footsteps sounding farther and farther away in the twilight. The great church was wonderful that night. When the organ played and the thousands of people sang, the walls shook with the sound, and little Pedro, way outside the city wall, felt the earth tremble around him. At the close of the service came the procession for the offerings to be laid on the altar. Rich men and great men marched proudly up to lay down their gifts to the Christ child. Some brought wonderful jewels, some brought baskets of gold, but the chimes did not ring. And last of all came the king of the country, hoping with all the rest to win for himself the chime of the Christmas bells. There went a great murmur through the church as the people saw the king take from his head the royal crown, all set with precious stones, and lay it gleaming on the altar as his offering to the holy child. Surely, everyone said, we shall hear the bells now, for nothing like this has ever happened before. But still... Only the cold old wind was heard in the tower, and the people shook their heads, and some of them said, as they had said before, that they never really believed the story of the chimes and doubted if they ever rang at all. Suddenly, everyone looked at the old minister, who was standing by the altar, holding up his hand for silence. Not a sound could be heard from anyone in the church, but as all the people strained their ears to listen, there came softly but distinctly, swinging through the air, the sound of the chimes in the tower. 
So far away and yet so clear the music seemed. So much sweeter were the notes than anything that had been heard before. Rising and falling away up there in the sky. That the people in the church sat for a moment as still as though something held each of them by the shoulders. And they all stood up together and stared straight at the altar to see what great gift had awakened the long silent bell. But all that the nearest of them saw was the childish figure of little brother who had crept softly down the aisle when no one was looking and had laid Pedro's little piece of silver on the altar. That's a wonderful story. Why did the bells ring when little brother laid the piece of silver on the altar? Well, then... Uh, Why didn't they ring when the great men brought jewels and things? Well, like the book said, each one was trying to bring some gift better than any other. Those men were trying to outdo each other, while little Pedro gave out of the goodness of his heart. He didn't have an ulterior motive. What's an ulterior motive? Well, I guess that's what I had when I came here. That's Miss Milford coming. It is? Yeah. Well, I uh, guess I'll be going. Aren't you going to wait and see our nurse? Where are you going, mister? Well, I think I'll sneak out this side door. But how do you know who brought the presents? Well, that's not important anymore. Merry Christmas. Thanks. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I'll tiptoe down the back stairs. Hmm. Five o'clock. I didn't know the hospital had chimes. Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. The show was written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Jack Meekin. In addition to our regular cast, you heard Ann Whitfield and Stuffy Singer as the children in the hospital. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you each week by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous cheese food Velveeta, and the complete line of Kraft quality food products. Here's a suggestion for Christmas time or any time. Begin now to save for a happier future with the regular purchase of United States savings bonds. Automatic purchase plans that make saving painless are available to you either where you work or where you bank. Ask about them. Three dollars invested now will get you four when the bonds mature. Or you can cash your bonds any time after 60 days and get back every cent you put in plus accrued interest. Be happy tomorrow because you were wise today. Buy United States savings bonds regularly. Good night, folks. See you next week. Break the Bank, radio's biggest money-paying show, is next on NBC.